Hey everybody, this video we're going to be covering one of the best, if not the best, robot currently. So I want everyone to focus on this spot right over here. So it literally has everything. It can stack normally, it can beam score, it can also score in the corners, and not only can it stand off cactus, it can also do it faster than any other robot. So this is one of the most efficient and fastest robots out there, and it's all because of this single mechanism up here. So make sure to stay around later because we'll be explaining how it works, the implications behind it, and why I personally think this robot is the best. So this match is from the WRCC Beijing competition that happened about 10 days ago. Um, so this orange bot looks like a pretty average 180 bot, a bit complicated claw. You can see a really big beam clamp there and it just drops those stacks right in. And you can see right there, uh, they use their standoff mechanism to just score that. And it's only been 20 seconds into the match and they've already finished a full cactus on that standoff goal. And you can see here they're loading really quick, they're stacking really quick. And one thing that we can actually see from this match is that uh, one team actually does both beams. So you can see the other team right there. They're not doing a lot. They're basically just doing some simple two-color stacks and that stuff. And this team, who's from Macau, they're doing all of the stacking. So as you can see, that's two beam stacks all by this one robot. And they do it really quick. They even have 10 seconds left in the match. As you can see, it's 10 seconds left. And they already have two full cactuses or wides, whatever you call it, done. And you can see with 10 seconds left, they actually have even more time to do a two color stack and put it in the triangle goal. And that is the end of the match. So you might be thinking, uh, you know, it's just this one preload claw. I can add it to any 180 and this robot is just a bit too complicated. Um, but there's actually three points on this robot that make it better than every other normal 180. And those are really the things that actually speed everything up. Uh, it's not just this claw. So first, we're going to talk about these hinged claws. So you can see um, in the video of the match that the stacking does look a bit weird. And the reason why is because these claws are actually hinged. So normal 180s, they're basically like a straight beam. Uh, but you can see on this one, the angle of the claw structure in front actually changes. And yes, this is a split claw. So you can see these rotate separately. So they have one motor each. And although this does complicate the claw a bit, when the claw is up in its normal stacking position, which is basically like this right now, um, it becomes really easy to do normal stacks uh, rather than a really angled 180 mechanism. And it's really good for this robot because instead of doing one pin at a time, which is the stem star philosophy, we can actually see in the video that uh, they keep two two colored stacks in their uh, claws and they drop it all onto the beam at once. So this just makes stacking really easy. And not only does it uh, speed up the stacking for beams, it also speeds up like normal uh, stacking for normal two or three colored stacks that you put in the triangle goal. But however, this hinged claw right here is actually really hard to tune so i do recommend you guys to try out normal 1e which is much which is much easier to build and then uh try to build a hinge claw like this and test out what's good for your driver what's good for your robot all of that and before we continue i just want to give a huge shout out to team 3668 from macau china they're down on the coast and this year 3668 has shown really outstanding performances these um early chinese matches and our second point brings us to the beam. So you might notice two things that are very different about the robot. So number one, its beam clamp is really big. And number two, its lift is not actually a four bar. You can see it's just like a beam that goes straight up. So this is something called a cascade lift, which is actually used on the hero bot in a different manner. Basically, these linear slides are being pulled by a winch. Um, the motors are somewhere around here. And then uh, as it goes up, this beam section also slides up so normally it's down here and then it slides up as it's going up and it just makes it really tall so since they're going for these 110 point stacks they need to be able to lift the beam higher than like a normal standoff goal because you can see they have another pin here uh, i do think this height is a bit overkill because that's like at least two more pins of height and they'll never be able to use that for this kind of having an extra pin on here, a lot of normal four bars that people are using won't work, which is why they use such a high lift. But the thing is, is that recently there have been new developments. Uh, I think it was Xander who first innovated on it. Basically, it's just a normal four bar, but the lift is much longer and the pivot point is placed more forward in the bot and also more higher. And this makes it so that it can lift 
way higher than normal. And then you can actually place it on standout goals with one or two pins on it, which will allow you to do these 110 points and 121 point cactuses. So this cascade, it's really um, complicated and also really hard to tune. So I really recommend you guys to try out both of them, but I would probably recommend the four bar. Now um, I want to take a look at the beam clamp right here. So when I was watching these matches at first, I was wondering why do they have such a big clamp? You can see normally teams just have small clamp that goes into the middle hole of the beam. But after some other matches, I realized that a lot of middle hole clamps are really hard to align. And often they knock over the entire stack because the clamp is kind of blocking the bottom pin from reaching in. And that means that they have to drop the beam onto uh, the stack on the ground, which increases the risk of the entire thing falling over. But if we look at this robot over here, um, instead of grasping the middle hole, it grabs the entire outside. Uh, that means that the middle is completely freed up. Uh, so we can see here that it just cut down into uh, the stack on the ground. And there's really no risk of anything falling over. And it also makes the driver's life much easier. And then it just unclamps when it's done. And, um, of course, the third point is the preload claw that we saw over here. Basically, um, it's just like separate claw that's powered by a simple pneumatic piston. You can see the piston right over here. Um, and then they just align and they place it down. And then the rubber band just kind of allowed to uh, grasp out. And then they can place uh, this beam here. Again, um, that competition, WRCC Beijing, it happened over 10 days ago. And recently in China, there was another competition where we saw uh, Magic Kid and XG. So this is one of their robots. You can see we actually have kind of a new type of mechanism for that preload right there. And this one is much simpler and it doesn't use pneumatics at all. So it's kind of just a passive mechanism. Uh, here we can see a pin on it and it basically kind of just drives onto the standoff goal. And once it drives onto a standoff goal, it, the pin kind of just uh, props on. And then the lift can just place the beam on there. And when I talked about the longer uh, four bar earlier, you can actually see on this robot, um, it looks really long and it can probably lift really high as well. Um, this looks about 16 or 17 holes long. And that's way longer than a normal four bar, which usually uses 1 by 12 or 1 by 14. This preload mechanism is just much simpler and it still does the job. No pneumatics. Um, of course, I always recommend building both and trying both as it's a really good step in the engineering design process and also really good for your notebooking and prototyping and all that. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you guys want access to all of these videos and pictures that we uh, looked at in this video, make sure to join our Discord in the description. Uh, we're also going to be launching our fully free introduction course soon. So if you're an IQ mentor, uh, you can definitely show our videos to your kids once we publish it. Anyways, that's, that's going to be all for today. And I'll see you guys in our next video.